In two-parent homes, usually one parent is in more denial than the other that their child might have autism, and this causes tension in marriages. In today's video blog, I'll discuss autism denial and how to get a parent out of denial and into action. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, online course creator, and the best selling author of The Verbal Behavior Approach. Each week, I provide you with some of my ideas about turning autism around. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that now. In the first page of my book, The Verbal Behavior Approach, I talk about the very first time my husband mentioned the possibility of autism when Lucas was just 21 months old. I'm gonna read you just the first page just to get a sense of what I was feeling. I was a registered nurse with more than a decade of experience, but when my physician husband first mentioned the possibility that my then 21 month old son Lucas might have autism, I was as bewildered and angry as any parent. To be honest, I had very little experience with autism and it simply never crossed my mind that my firstborn son was anything less than perfect. So what made my husband think that my son had autism? He pointed out that Lucas wanted to watch television too much and he didn't play with toys. And that at times, Lucas simply appeared to be in his own world. At that time, I wasn't willing to look at the possibility. I argued that Lucas had language, a good 10 words, which wasn't that unusual for a child under two, and that he was a warm, cuddly baby. He didn't look like he had autism since he didn't fit the picture I had in my mind of what autism was supposed to look like. He wasn't banging his head. He wasn't rocking. He wasn't doing anything that I considered to be autistic. I told my husband on that day that he was crazy for bringing up autism, and I told him that Lucas didn't have it and that I never, never wanted to hear the word autism again. And after he mentioned it, and I told him I never wanted to hear it, I quickly went into a deep state of denial for over a year. This denial didn't help anyone. Um, especially Lucas, who fell further and further behind his peers to the point where I had to do something. But that year was so critical. So as I mentioned a minute ago, in two-parent homes, one parent is usually partially or completely in denial about their child's delays and possible autism. And in our case, I was definitely the one in denial about Lucas's autism, which is really hard to believe now. One of my first video blogs two years ago is on denial, so you may wanna check that out too. But it's kind of ironic that I was the one in denial back then because now I am so far into the autism world. I say, speak, type, write autism so many times a day. Um, I, I don't even know if I could keep track. But I was in denial for about a year. And when I think back, when I look at the young children that I've worked with over the past years, I know that that year that I was in denial was such a critical year uh, for Lucas. But back in the late 1990s, when Lucas was starting to show signs of autism, I didn't know any of these techniques either. Now that I know the techniques, it's very exciting when I get to work with very, very young children because that's when we are going to see the most progress if we intervene at the earliest signs. And that's why I'm on such a strong mission to help parents not be in denial, just, just get, the, get the child evaluated, whether it's autism or not. I know these techniques that I'm teaching work like a charm. So to address autism denial, you need to realize that everyone has their own history and their own baggage and their own culture and to understand the dynamics between parents if it's a two-parent family and whether it's a single uh, parent or two-parent family there's also grandparents and other relatives who often come into the mix in terms of denial 
I know my uh, mother-in-law was one of the first people to tell my husband she thought there might be a problem. This was later after he mentioned the possibility. I um, know that there are other relative grandparents that are totally on board or totally not on board. And then you have to deal with, with the dynamics of all that going on too. So what do you do with a parent that's in denial? What if you're starting to accept things yourself about your delays in your child, but your partner is not? For me, what got me out of denial after that whole year where I literally was not open to discussing autism at all was an autism mom that I went to visit who told me two things. I didn't have Lucas there with with me at the visit. And at that point, I was still telling this mom that I thought it was just a significant language delay, not autism. But she had a child with autism and she, she was telling me that even if Lucas just had a speech delay, as I was hoping, she suggested that I needed to learn about ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis Treatment, since with ABA, even young children who were diagnosed with severe autism could be treated, and in some cases, actually in almost half the cases, in the original LOVAS study, young children, she told me, could recover from autism. This same autism mom on the same day told me that the earlier you start intensive ABA therapy and the more mild the autism to start, the better the outcome. So basically after a year in denial, this autism mom told me that there was real treatment for kids with autism and real hope that ABA therapy could work. Um, and it could work even if Lucas didn't have autism and it was just a speech delay. Either way, I needed to get on it. I needed to learn about ABA. So literally on the way home from this mom's house, I stopped at the bookstore and started looking into autism and ABA, buying two books and reading them very quickly. So after reading the description of autism in these two books that were both written by Catherine Maurice, I knew that Lucas had autism. And more importantly, I knew that I needed to help get him diagnosed and start ABA as soon as possible. Today, more than two decades after my period of denial, there are more people that know people with kids with autism. There's less stigma. There's more evidence to show that intervening early can really turn things around. So people are less likely to be in denial now than they were in the late 1990s. But denial is still a big issue for many people. There's also another big issue that wasn't so bad back in the late 1990s. The waiting list to get an autism evaluation and ABA therapy started started are very long. So some people are telling me, a lot of people are telling me that just to get their child to a developmental pediatrician for an evaluation is a nine month to two year waiting list. Can you imagine if you thought your toddler might have cancer and were told that you'd have to wait nine months to two years to get it looked at to see if it was actually cancer? Then there's often more lines and more waiting lists for good ABA treatment. So it is just crucial that parents get out of denial as soon as possible and get on wait lists. And there's a lot you can do to turn speech delays and early signs of autism around, even without a diagnosis while you're waiting. Um, for an evaluation, for instance. So if you're a parent, grandparent, early intervention professional, or a concerned friend who is worried about a one to three-year-old who's showing signs of autism, hyperactivity, excessive tantrums, or delays in language, I urge you to attend a free online workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash toddler workshop. When you get more information from the workshop, this will empower you to help get anyone out of denial and share that workshop with them too. But you might need to watch it first and gather some more information. Wherever you're watching this, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up and share this video with others who might benefit. And I will see you right here next week.